Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And good morning and welcome to our service at Trinity Lutheran Church. Uh, my name is Lindsay Milbreath. I'm just sitting in for the moment. Pastor is up in the balcony. He will be down shortly after our opening hymn, which is hymn number 379, O Come All Ye Faithful. congregation to please rise. We begin our service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of the altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father. Seek his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, 
have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. This is our confession. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only begotten son to die for you and for me. And for his sake, he forgives us all of our sins. As I called an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this juncture, we are going to invite the true family forward to light our Advent wreath. Congregation may be seated. Blessed and Merry Christmas. Finally, Christmas has arrived. For the four weeks of the Advent season, we light the Advent wreath in anticipation of Christmas. This practice also reminds us of the long wait for the first advent of Christ our Lord. We now see that God's timing was perfect, as always. Paul says, it was the fullness of time when God sent forth his son. The Middle East was enjoying the peace, which was accomplished by Roman might. The entire Roman Empire shared a single language, accomplished by the Empire of Greece and Alexander the Great. God's people were hungry for faithful spiritual leaders because the leaders they had at the time of the first Christmas were, by and large, corrupt and selfish. Jesus would be the Prince of Peace, who came in an era of peace. Jesus would speak the language of God, the good news of the gospel. And Jesus would be the Good Shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Christmas is really about God's kindness, which is what today's epistle reading emphasizes. The Christmas morning verse is John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We will now light the Christ candle. Our prayer. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for the wondrous timing of your first advent so long ago. May we see the kindness which you offer us through faith in Jesus our Savior. May we also be an extension of that same kindness. You have told us to be ye kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Bless the world once again through Christ that they might see your kindness in Christmas and in Christians. In your name we pray, amen. And thank you to the true family. We continue our worship with Psalm 98, our Christmas psalm. We read it responsibly. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained the victory for him. The Lord has made his salvation known. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. The Lord has made his salvation known. He has remembered his graciousness and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout joyfully before the King, the Lord. May the sea roar and the all it contains, the world and the who dwell in it. May the rivers clap their hands, may the mountains sing together for joy. Please watch the and the glory.
Say, the Lord be with you. We gather our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for the first and greatest Christmas gift, Christ. We praise you for the wonder of our Lord Jesus, wrapped in the womb of a virgin and revealed in a manger. Help us to clearly see your kindness, love, salvation, and renewal in the gift of Christ poured out into his hearts by God, the Holy Spirit, and the gift of faith. Enable us to live by this faith as heirs of eternal life. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. May be seated for the first two readings. The Old Testament reading for this celebration of Christmas is from Isaiah 62, beginning at the 10th verse. Go through, go through the gates, clear a way for the people, build up, build up the highway, remove the stones, lift up a flag over the peoples. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation is coming. Behold, his reward is with him and his compensation before him. And they will call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you will be called, sought out, a city not abandoned. This is the word of the Lord. And our epistle reading is from Titus, chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. But when the kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us not on the basis of deeds which we did in righteousness, but in accordance with his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out upon us through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, being justified by his grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Ask the congregation to rise for the verses of the day and our Christmas gospel. The verses of the day from the Christmas gospel are from Luke 2. We read them responsively. They're on page 4 in your bulletin. And so the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. gospel for this celebration of Christmas Day is recorded in Luke chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, o Lord. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth their firstborn son 
and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. And we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Our sermon hymn is hymn 375. We sing verses 1, 2, and 5 of the hymn, Come, Your Hearts and Voices Raise It. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, peace, and kindness be yours on this Christmas day. Kind Christmas is probably not the greeting you're used to hearing. Maybe you didn't hear it until today, and maybe you didn't hear it until you heard the epistle read from Titus chapter 3. Titus wrote these words, But when the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared, when the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared. That is St. Paul's rather long-winded way of saying Merry Christmas. Because we can be merry because the kindness of God has appeared. Jesus came in mercy. He came in humility. The kindness of Christ appeared very obviously in a baby, in the infant Messiah. The Canadian philosopher, Marshall McLuhan, had a proverb that is now almost in uh, everyone's heart and mind, the medium is the message. I largely believe that this is true. The package which delivers the gift is really as much the message as the gift itself. The message of tenderness, innocence, gentleness, compassion, love, and the natural affinity to want to get close to a baby is so much wrapped up in the incarnation and the birth and the nativity of Christ. I mean, you want to pick up a baby and you want to gravitate towards this incredible, tender, kind mercy of God made manifest. The medium of the first Christmas was Christ the infant, and we could add placed in a manger. That was kind of the wrapping on Christmas Day. It is a combination of tenderness the infant, and usefulness, the manger, a regular feeding trough for animals. If you think about that as a metaphor, which I've oftentimes pointed out at Christmas Day, Jesus is the bread of life who comes down out of heaven, born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, and placed in a manger, a feeding trough, reminding us of one of Jesus' opening statements in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And we find that satisfaction in the manger. I came across the story of two brothers who had, uh, were close in age. Uh, one had grown up very sickly, uh, and it turned out that he had acute kidney disease in both of his kidneys. Well, this story was pretty much ignored by the media until one of the brothers gave up his kidney for the other brother. And then, when both of them were looking really healthy and strong, the media heard about the story, and there was a, a news interview of the boys playing together, looking great. The favorite part I have of the story is one of the questions that was asked of a journalist to the brother who gave the kidney. He said, which kidney did you give to your brother? And he said, well, I'm right-handed. And so I gave him my right kidney because I thought that was my best. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He, of course, gave what was good, best, perfect. One of my commentaries speaking about this word kindness in Titus says that it is this combination of these two thoughts. One is goodness and one is usefulness. And he says that there is no equivalent word for the word that they used in the first century in the Greek language for this word kindness that brings together goodness and usefulness in one place. Well, we might say, well, the word is Jesus, because that seems to make some sense reading this epistle read. So just like the boy who gave his best kidney, he thought, God gave his best. And also the idea of giving is included in this beautiful reading from Titus 3.4. There is this phrase, his love for mankind. That's actually just one word, and it's a word you all know. It's philanthropy. It's that combination of those two words, phileo, you know, the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, that's the first part of that word. And it means compassionate friendship love. It is not as deep as agape love, but it's close. And then anthropos, mankind, philanthropy. I have a friend of mine who happens to be a Jewish man, and he uh, invited me on numerous occasions to speak with his uh, class, which was a large lecture hall, 
and I had the opportunity to talk about this particular word. And I said, I believe that your professor is a philanthropist. And I explained that lover of mankind is something that God really wants from all of us. But until we meet Christ, it's hard to do that. In fact, according to the gospel, it's really impossible to love until we know that God loves us. But Jesus, being love, comes down out of heaven and has a love for mankind and shows the entire world about Christmas. By the way, I got a new Christmas present recently, which was about Christmas all over the world, and it really is ubiquitous. Uh, people who are in China and Korea, people who really have no knowledge whatsoever of the Christmas story, celebrate Christmas by at least having icons of Christmas, such as Santa Claus, the original Saint Nicholas, who, by the way, was part of the guy who wrote the Nicene Creed, we just confessed. The Ten Commandments tell us to love God and love our neighbor. We know to do this, whether or not we know Jesus or not. Paul tells us those are written in our hearts. So you can be a philanthropist. You can be a lover of other people according to the law. You can care for them. You can act in ways that are loving. You can treat them like friends. But Jesus goes the extra mile. Think about what he said about friends. Greater love as this. Then he lays down his life for his friends. There is no greater love than that sort of love, which is the agape love that is also taught in Scripture. And it is astonishingly useful, and it, of course, is good, and it is, of course, kind. It's similar to the boy giving his kidney, except in this case, when Jesus comes, it's like the boy giving both of his kidneys. Jesus gave everything he had. So Christians, as we learn to appreciate these words in Scripture, like the word kindness, I mean, if you just look at Christmas, of course, it's beautiful, it's tender, it's kind, it's love, it's made manifest. We start to put together those things. But then when you look at the full course of Jesus' life and the cross and the resurrection, you really begin to understand just how much God loves us. So St. Paul, by using this word kindness, is saying that Jesus was good and he was also utilitarian. He gives us something that I think is an everyday gift, forgiveness, applied to us, applied to our hearts. And speaking about the birth of Christ, included in this beautiful passage is another sort of birth that comes to people when they're baptized. He saved us not on the basis of deeds, which we did in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit through whom he poured out upon us through Jesus Christ our Savior so that being justified by his grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Washing, renewal, regenerating. That's an everyday gift. And that word heir, it's a word that we know references an inheritance. There's an inheritance coming to us. I have never experienced knowing that I'm going to get an inheritance except the inheritance of eternal life. I have received some inheritances which were through relatives, not enormous, but surprising. That's the same. Imagine how frustrating it must be for people who know that they're in line to get an inheritance and maybe has some serious financial problems, and probably come into the sinful thought, man, I wish they would just die. We want to get that inheritance now so we can pay off our debt. But this verse tells us that heirs are present tense. We are inheriting Jesus right now every single day as we get the beautiful utility of forgiveness of sins and the kindness, which then we can be conduits. And you heard that read that beautiful passage from Ephesians 4.32, we extend that kindness just as God gave it to us. Here's a very pragmatic utilitarian story that comes from a recent experience in the grocery store. So you know about two years ago, roughly speaking, these stickers showed up on the floors of most shopping areas, you know, six feet from the other. So I was in the grocery store recently um, a store that I oftentimes go and have a casual approach because I know everybody. 
uh, and uh, there was a, a man in line, and he had already gone through the, the line and was at the end paying. And um, I just started to put my few things at the end of, far end away from him, uh, getting ready for my own checkout. Uh, and the man looked at me. You can read a lot, even with a mask on. And he was not the least bit happy. He walked right up in my face and he said, do you see this sticker? I saw the sticker. It dawned on me at that very moment that this man was not really concerned about protection. He would not have been in my face had he been so. He was really worried about power and maybe a little self-righteousness. So the clergyman, seeking to justify himself, thought to himself, dude, if you were really concerned about this, you'd tell me that 10 feet away where you were before. I have learned to be very gracious and humble. And I didn't say any of that. I listened to him hold me accountable. And he was right. I wasn't on the sticker. But immediately, I started to think about Ephesians 4.32 and the kindness that God gave to me and how many times I have been self-righteous. And so finally, there was like this release I had. When it dawned on me, that's what I believe. And I simply said to the man, And I really meant it. I missed a huge opportunity. The opportunity was to say to the man, will you forgive me? The pragmatics of Christmas ultimately come down in the forgiveness. The tender mercy of our God, the kindness of Jesus appears. He came so that we might be forgiven. That's why he got the name Jesus. Because he would be the Savior. Matthew would say, for the forgiveness of sins. That's the name attached to his name, which means Savior. Being saved is what Christmas is about. We get to see it in Jesus. And so that you and I can have the pragmatic, utilitarian, incredible benefit of daily forgiveness from God. We are heirs already, present tense. And then we get to share it because it's not our justice or our righteousness. It's God's mercy, which is huge, abundant, eternal, and all-powerful flowing through us. The kindness of Jesus is both good and useful. When I was in that grocery line, it became very pragmatic. I should have asked that man for the same kindness that I knew Jesus gave me to challenge him. What do you do about forgiveness if you're not someone who has received the inheritance by faith? missed opportunity. The boy who gave his kidney would have died had he not, his brother would have died had he not received it from his other brother. Without Christmas, we'd be lost forever. And our daily lives would be difficult because we wouldn't have the joy, the good news of great joy, which shall be for all people. The kindness of our God and Savior and his love for mankind has appeared. It is good, it is useful, it is available right there, like the manger. Kind Christmas to you. Amen. And now may the peace and kindness of God, which supersedes what we can imagine, stand guard over your hearts and minds to keep us strong in Christ our Savior. And we rise and uh, sing the offertory hymn, O Sing of Christ, hymn 362. We sing verses 1 and 4.
You may be seated while we gather our offerings and prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your kindness that appeared in the manger. We want to gravitate towards that kindness. We love because you first loved us. Help us, Lord, to every day apply the usefulness and goodness of your kindness to our life. In your name we pray. Amen. A couple of prayer requests today. Um, during the COVID era, and a little bit before, we had a family joining with us uh, from uh, Syracuse. They were also uh, friends with some of our college students. Um, and uh, Skyler was the college student, and his grandmother, uh, Rosemary, uh, died um, this, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, and so we pray, for, we pray for that family as they grieve for her. She would also worship here. Um, also, uh, there's a prayer request that may all who have to work today still know the joy of Christmas, and we have several among us who have to do that. Let's rise for these prayers as we prepare for the sacrament. Lord Jesus Christ, we are inheritors of heaven. We are the children of God. And the eternal Holy Spirit, the triune God, has been embedded in our hearts, bringing us a new life. We are born from above by the washing of regeneration. For people who believe that, Lord, it is a joyful way to live. And we give you thanks, Lord, that according to her confession, Rosemary did believe that. We pray your comfort and consolation upon the whole family, Krista, Schuyler, Caden, and others who grieve for their grandmother, Rosemary. We also ask, Lord, that you would be with those who work uh, at odd hours and on holidays. Uh, this high holy day of Christmas is a day for Christians that is sacred and it's hard to work, but we appreciate their utilitarianism. They are showing their love and devotion by what they are doing and bless them uh, on the day that they work. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. We now prepare for communion with the preface on page 5 in your bulletin or 208 in your hymnal. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and proper, Lord, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we may not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemn the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy... You promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had supped and given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. We will have a communion in the round today, just so you know, and so you'll be gathered down here. We will also have the common cup available if you'd like it. We'll come through with the host, the individual cups, and then the common cup. Please rise as we sing together hymn 391, Rejoice, Rejoice this Happy Morning. Give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Well, blessed uh, Christmas to all of you. Uh, tomorrow's Sunday, so I hope you come to church. Tomorrow's service will be at 1030. There's no Bible study or, or, or Sunday school for the next two weeks. So worship both weeks at 1030. Uh, still not sure whether or not um, the office, when the office will be open or where the pastor will be during the week. Pray that he knows what he's doing. Um, other than that, it's been uh, a blessed uh, Christmas season. Thanks for all who are here today to celebrate the birth of our Lord and go with his blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. And our closing hymn is Joy to the World.